Welcome to Oral Hygiene. It's the podcast where we talk about educational films, experimental caught films, the more off kilter of documentaries, I suppose. Uh, this is Matt here with me. It's Monday. It's Monday. Well, it's not really Monday, but you're hearing it's on a Monday and Andrew Shear is here. Hi. Hey. Hi. Hey. Monday man. Um, right. So this one, you were like, we're going to do Nick Zet, right? Today. I mean, I just... I'm like anything from the cinema of transgression. I love that stuff. Right. So the obvious choice would be they eat scum. Yes. Is, they but eat scum. it's not readily available. It's never been readily available. It wasn't no. in the past. It's still not. So No, I don't even have. Yeah, I don't own that one. I think I might in my parents' house in the States. I think I do have a VHS dub of it somewhere. Oh, although. that's. That's different. I have a dub from video library, but I mean, I don't have an actual like DVD copy or VHS copy. Like I have that for all of the other ones. Okay. I feel like I like rented a bootleg of that one somewhere in the day. Was that a real video? I don't know. It was film threat video. Yeah. 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 Okay. Well, I guess it was just cheap packaging. So it looked like a bootleg. Yeah, I'm sure it was. I mean, there was not any thing that they sold in stores it was just for specialty shops They're, okay we, we, we order we've talked plenty of blockbuster but the that's that's what they killed those totally bizarro you know like cheap packaging stuff yeah i think it was mail order only they didn't expect it to be on a shelf somewhere <laughs> yeah <laughs> but um just the quirky the, the weird horror films the blockbuster wouldn't stock them i mean <laughs> you know they never stock they uh they eat scum i'm pretty sure and um anyway we couldn't find that one i i do want to revisit that one i, I could dig a little deeper but yeah today yeah, I, is one i had not seen before watching for this which is a uh, police state it's several years later it's uh 87 mm -hmm. so um I remember hearing cinema of transgression but i'm like drawing a complete blank now can you give that a, a little bit of an explanation Sure, yeah. Well, it came out, you know, first there was uh, punk, then new wave, then no wave. And um, this would be considered punk cinema. It came out of the same area during the same period of time. Uh, your big names were uh, Nick Zed, Richard Kern, Beth B. And they were all making uh, short films. Uh, very few features came out of it. Um, I think you had, uh, was that a... Uh, um, State, scum geek maggot bingo and um i think that was probably it kern didn't make any features and so uh, basket case in that uh particular genre? basket case was frank hennenlotter okay oh yeah, come from new york but it wasn't part of it um it was uh they were really interesting and they never were popular but um fans of sonic youth would probably know death valley 69 um that was a video that kern made with them and so uh, they were just very, uh, very confrontational for the senses. They were uh, uh, violent, mostly, also sexually explicit. Um, there's a recent documentary on uh, David Wojnarowicz, and David was in uh, Manhattan's Love Suicides, and I can't remember if Kern made that or Zed, but um, it was just, you know, their artist friends and their musician friends making mostly black and white very low budget grainy weird crap so what uh happens in this particular grainy black and white low budget thing so in, in police state was made by nick zed and uh it's also stars nick zed and nick basically gets um shaken down by the cops on the street and uh, he gets busted because they think he's got uh drugs and he's hiding drugs and the entire movie is them interrogating him beating the crap out of him and uh violently abusing him and that's it yeah yeah to you know it's i guess it's the uh the shake hands with danger build up right the, except here it's all like you know it's like accidents it's just like horrible focused violence eventually yeah so. and, and i and i think probably nick was being harassed on the street by police as anybody who didn't fit the profile of the average upstanding american citizen was um and so at that time uh now mostly we hear about uh the police uh, murdering people of color 
but back then I'm sure it was still happening. You just, nobody was around to film it like they are now. Um, but uh, I think Zed's intention was to show people the, his experience with the cops, which was not a positive one. Yeah. Although it almost comes across as quaint now because the, uh, in the past few years, the uh, image of the police in, in the States is now, you know, in black military riot gear, more or less, right? Where here there's still boys in blue. Oh, in Japan. Yeah. No. What is the, what is the Japanese uh, cultural opinion of the American police as of 2021? I mean, it looks like a military occupation half the time looking from the outside. Yeah, yeah. The, the most recent case, I mean, it's kind of unavoidable because the verdict just came down yesterday uh, in the case of uh, the murder of uh, George Floyd. This policeman um, just straight up on camera with a bunch of onlookers murdered him in the street. And he knew he would get away with it because traditionally the police are not um, uh, found guilty of murder when they kill someone. And uh, he was right. <laughs> he may have been, you know, used as an example, but uh, he uh, it, it was it was a big deal. And yeah, that's the way the cops are. They roll out thinking they're the executioners, military. They think they're all Navy SEALs. The Japanese police are usually pretty chill. They don't carry guns. But I mean, as an American, I still kind of like avoid them. Actually, I did get I, you could say I got harassed a few weeks ago but i think they were just really bored because <laughs> I, was, I was walking home and i just went to like throw something in a garbage can it's like in front of a closed uh, cell phone shop right and just as i do that i guess they were on patrol and come and and i'm walking over and stop me right and i mean they, they were polite it was definitely not like this although i wasn't nick zetting back at them either so that probably helped I mean, why are you yeah, walking what? around a closed store it's like i was throwing trash away you know <laughs> Not that this is a good analogy because it's a terrible analogy to make, but in our band, we used to hide the wah pedal from our guitarist because he used it too much. Yeah. It's like because it was there, he used it. Well, I think the same is uh, the case for these guns and these uh, military style weapons. People that have them tend to just really want to use them. Well, that was um, the, the start. I, I don't remember the specific name of the law, but it's about 2004, 2005, where they had all that surplus war stuff and just basically start giving away if uh you know it's like hey for 500 bucks or, or no maybe no i think it was just like the cost to get it there here's a tank yeah, less i mean why yeah the police don't need a tank so you know defunding the police it's more like not not necessarily that but take away all the toys they don't need <laughs> yeah exactly it's um i mean police state does give uh, a really good even now um something to talk about which is the mental state of these officers because everyone involved uh in the arrest and questioning and torturing of zed's character which i assume is supposed to be him because he's talking about you know just because this is how i look or you know because you don't like me or you know they're they call him all kinds of things they're uh, a lot of homophobic slurs uh, i wrote down yeah <laughs> yell at the black woman and call her a racial slur i mean this was zed's reality on the streets you know you got from new york city 1981 82 early 80s when these things were being made is not the new york city of now although this stuff obviously uh, still goes down but um it was much more of a reality for the average person uh, so it's definitely someone counterculture like nick zed was and so um but you look at the behavior of these they're villains they're psychos oh yeah well again um you know, there is there's a certain how everyone acts um, getting stopped a few weeks ago. You know, they're like, where you live? I told them where I lived. Um, and, and they're like, oh, you, you actually live right here. OK, that's cool. That's fine. You know, I didn't tell them I live at 86 fuck you street. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> but I mean, you know, a white Fan person can, can get away with that. Yeah. You know, Fan fantastic yeah. dialogue, of course. But <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, um, that's also a thing that I thought of in that. Yeah, it's it, it does seem quaint now because even like in the 90s, Martin Lawrence was doing bits in his comedy about, you know, the way whites talk to police as opposed to the way a black person would talk to the police. And that does uh, come through here. I mean, you know, it it, does. That's the thing. it's horribly violent, but it's, you know, it almost counts as slapstick. Like this is the real world Three Stooges. Yeah, yeah. I mean... 
the thing about the cinema of transgression is it's it's one of its like defining characteristics is extremity you know and in that regard you never know what what's exciting about them is you really never know what kind of image is going to come up next you can there's no stars there's no like special effects budget or anything like that and so you never know someone could leap at the screen with a knife and gouge someone's eye out just in a split second you really never know it's no matter how many times I see those movies, they're still like amazing. But the, that is a kind of thing that's detrimental in the case of police state. And the statement that Nick Zed was trying to make is, like you said, it is, it is almost comical, especially the sound effects they use when he's being beaten. Yeah. I mean, it's like, you don't die, I kill you. <laughs> and yeah. then I, I, I rewound just to make sure I got that one right. Because it's, <laughs> um, it's, you know, I, I, he should have followed that up with, I, I got a collection of dicks back in me office, you know? That was a, oh God, that part still, I mean, it was like, uh, that's the punchline. It, it really was. It's the, well, of yeah, a, it, 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 that's of a horrible it. joke, <laughs> a punchline yeah. of a horrible joke, a, a horror in the, you know, the true sense of the word, right? <laughs> sure. Yeah. And, um, castration also, I'm sure is a technique, that's, you know, definitely been used in interrogation and things like that. That's, policeman that's been doing the most stuff to Nick Zed and questioning him the longest at the station, a uh, falling down Michael Douglas looking guy. Uh, he, um, he produces this giant pair of uh, what Pliers? looks like they're not, they're, they look like scissors and bolt cutters. I don't know. They're, they're very serious looking pair of shears. And uh, he's like, you know, you don't tell me where the drugs are. I want to cut your dick off and then I'm going to make you blow your brains out. But then he puts a gun to his neck and he's like, and correct me if I'm wrong, I haven't, I actually haven't rewatched this in years. He puts a guy, the gun to his neck and says, if you don't basically take your pants down, let me cut your dick off, I'm just going to shoot you. And for some reason, he doesn't, he doesn't say, okay, just do it. He pulls him down and the cop, yeah, cuts, cuts off his dick. And then it just, I think it's a, I think it's a smash to white instead of cut to black. Yeah. And you hear him screaming. But yeah, and they had so it's the worst sound effects in the world. I mean, not worst as in like badly made. Worst as in like, oh, let's finish this movie, <laughs> which is yeah, the yeah. intended. It's kind, of, it's kind of surprised that they didn't show it because I, I want to say Winorovich in um, Manhattan Loves Suicides, he cuts his throat, but I know in one of Richard Kern's movies, which are typically way more violent than Nick Zed's. Yeah, uh, I was about to say, I remember Kern to me. I just, I, when you say the name, I just start seeing like, blurgling like grayish gore and stuff yeah yeah because um Tom, thomas or no what was his name pinion i don't want to say it's charles pinion uh he was the fan of like evil dead and stuff but kern was also a big horror movie fan so a lot of gore in kern's movies uh also um <laughs> nick zed gets pegged in one of them <laughs> <laughs> by a woman wearing a dildo but um it's uh it's it's definitely like I don't feel it's done for shock value the way Kearns was. I do still think that, I mean, would you say police state does have like a, I mean, it is kind of disturbing. It does have impact the way he, like I said, it's, it's the horrific punchline. The joke keeps building up, sit in the chair. And then why are you sitting in a chair? I beat the shit out of you. Stand on a table. And you know, it's just a joke going back and forth. And uh, yeah, I I mean, literally I I keep saying, cause that that's a joke construction, isn't it? If you take the yeah. whole inter- interrogation as a joke, then that's the punchline. Yeah, yeah, and, no, and I it, agree. But the thing is, it's the director that uh, is is uh, getting dismembered, right? <laughs> uh, yeah, that's an important again. thing. Yes. <laughs> yeah, so, it's an important yeah. thing to note. Yeah, so it's 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 the director, the writer, emasculating himself for a um, for you know a Watchmen comedian style joke yeah yeah <laughs> it's just a great way to describe it actually yeah <laughs> oh, God. yeah no it's it's still rough going and I mean, uh, for alex delarge and clockwork orange this is definitely a comedy <laughs> yeah yeah well true and you know if you see movies like hostel and saws as, as a uh, ridiculous then obviously something like this um isn't gonna bother you um or like even Reservoir Dogs with the ear being cut off. Mm-hmm. Maybe I've resensitized myself a little bit. I've uh, I've left to my own devices. I've pretty much fallen off the horror wagon. So, sure. 
So, uh, I mean, I, you know, this one is just like, oh, crap, that's happening. But I, I guess I, 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 I still got a stomach. I just, you know, tend to gravitate toward other stuff. But sure, I do like experimental film because I'm doing this podcast, right? So this <laughs> obviously falls into yeah. that. Uh, In an experimental uh, film, you never know when you're going to see, you know, something gross happen. Right, right. That's why we're experimenting, yes. You yeah, know. That's the I mean, of it. goes back to, to Bunuel and, you know, slashing up eyeballs, yeah? <laughs> oh, no. Without question. I mean, that's the defining shot in that whole movie, you know? Yeah. So, and, and I, man, there's probably even earlier examples I, I just simply don't know of. So, but I guess that's the first big hit. I'm, I'm just sitting here thinking of the German expressionists that they had disturbing stuff. I don't think they had gory stuff. <laughs> yeah, some old, old, uh, old uh, Japanese horror also has it too. Oh, yeah. 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 They'll, you know, the, they they love eyeballs and stuff, so they do eyeballs that walk around and float around and all that sort of stuff. <laughs> yeah. But uh, any anything else you want to throw out on the uh, police state? Um, you can get police state. I don't know if it's still available, but Nick Zed had um a couple of volumes uh, available for years of his short films, and they were called the Abnormal, the Cinema of Nick Zed S N S I N E M A. And I don't want, I don't remember if it was two or three volume DVDs, but they were, um, they were ones that you could actually buy uh, from him off of his website. And um, the hardcore Richard Kern collection, which uh, I rented in two volumes from Film Threat Video, this is also, was available as of a few years ago on DVD as well with all of his short films collected into it. And there's a great book by Creation Books out of the UK called Death Tripping that pretty much covers the whole thing. And I heard that Kino Video, Kino Lorber, is about to put out a Blu-ray of Beth B's movies. And and I should probably note, we decided to do this one. And then when I went to watch it, Nick said it just left a comment on the YouTube page. <laughs> this, cool. this, no, no, a sarcastic like, thanks for putting on my film without asking me. So I, I guess people should probably, you know, get into the DVD set if that's their thing. Cause Oh, uh, well, he's an ornery person. No, I, oh, well, that's clear. But, but at the yeah. same time, you know, he's not wrong. Just like, no, uh, he's, not, he's not wrong but he's, you know, no, I mean, but, but I'm just saying like, you know, well, the guy himself is like, you know, I have presented in a way you can buy it. So Maybe yeah, and I bought throw the guy a bone. <laughs> yeah, I bought all those. I have all legit releases of uh, of Nick Zed's movies. And I really enjoy them. Um, and the only reason I see Ornery is because I know people in the past have attempted to interview him. <laughs> um, he probably will want to come on your show after he hears this. <laughs> That'd be cool. <laughs> so, but yeah, yeah, this one, this one's gonna stick. As I said, I saw Date Scum what like twenty plus years ago at your place, most likely. Um, yeah. I don't, yeah, I, I don't even remember what the story is, but I definitely remember the movie. It's it just, you know, it, it subconsciously sticks with you. You know, like David Lynch or something, right? Oh, yeah, no. And uh, Geek Maggot Bingo is one of the most, like, inspiring uh, DIY movies I've ever seen. And it's one of the ones I watch a lot of times before making my own movies. I always, yeah. like, check it out. It's very inspiring. Just, I mean, I would love to be able to just talk to him um, about how he made it you know uh straight you know just talk to him about just how he made the movie um because it seems like it was all made out of cardboard in his apartment but he created these forests and castles and laboratories i mean it's just i mean it's massive in my world it's a massive achievement with movie making i I guess that's why i brought up basket case earlier because that one kind of slips in your subconscious in a similar sort of way so it's down the street from geek bag and bingo yeah, yeah. I mean, I guess it's not as punk rock, but uh, <laughs> it does have the same funky, the punky vibe. The funky it it vibe. does, and it's also, uh, you know, very Grindhouse, very, um, you know, 42nd Street, very of its time. Uh, it's definitely one of the midnight movies. Like, if you call yourself a cult movie fan uh, and you haven't seen Basket Case, then you missed one big one. I guess we'll wrap up today. Uh, go ahead and give tell them where to find your thingy doodles. Oh, doodles. So well. doodles. <laughs> <laughs> I could right beneath this keyboard. Uh, my friends and I make uh, low budget movies out of Athens, Georgia. They're called Gonzorific, G O N Z O R I F F I C. And uh, you can buy 
our movies that we make at gonzorific.com. Uh, we also have a YouTube channel. We also have an Instagram, a Twitter, and a face space. And this is oral hygiene at Twitter and Facebook and all of that. And I guess I'll talk about the sci-fi sanctuary today where I talk up full-length sci-fi movies. That's Luke and Matt sci-fi sanctuary, which is at MLSFS pod at Twitter, other things, Facebook, places like that. So, <laughs> uh, you know, I'll just, I'll just send you all off, you know, today, just asking if you doing drugs, you're a liar. That's your sleaze. <laughs> I, I didn't get around to reading that quote and I meant to. <laughs> You're a liar. Oh, he's like, they're at my apartment, okay? And he's like, I don't believe you. Dude, did we, what are we doing here? <laughs> Tell me where the drugs are. My apartment. I don't believe you.